What is Youth Congress registration at right now? It's right at 33,000. That's awesome. Yeah, it's so exciting. What, what's the highest we've ever had before? The highest ever recorded was two years ago, uh, 19,000. And wow. so it's quite a significant jump. We did have several that had tried to register for the overflow, uh, but the reality was we just didn't have enough room. That's when we knew we had to make the switch and uh, get into a football stadium to try to facilitate. We were hoping to be at 30,000 by the time North American Youth Congress got here. We're already at 33,000, and so we'd love to see 35. Can I get a 40? <laughs> <laughs> so do you guys think you can get to the 40 range? We believe that we can, you know. Brother Jones preached in chapel this morning, just have that faith. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, I do not believe in any way it's outside of the scope or okay. possibility of what we can get. I believe we have the constituency to do it. We have the excitement to do it. So That's I wouldn't, be, su wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we had it. So I, I was talking to Rain King, and he told me this crazy story about Columbus. Uh, could you share that with us for those that haven't heard about it? Tell us about yeah, you're talking about the food. We <laughs> we try to prep cities when we're coming in. They want to eat, and they're going to eat late. You know, and people we try to allow the city to understand. They say, "What are they doing while they're here?" Like we're just having church. We're having a really good church. There'll be tremendous fellowship. But when they get out in the night time, it's teenagers. They want to eat, and so Columbus had kind of given Indianapolis, from what we understand, the heads up. Every restaurant you can have open, every food truck you can have available, they like to eat. And so uh, we're assuming 33,000 plus are coming ready to eat at Youth Congress. And we're, we're trying to have everyone possible in the entire city ready to go for that. So That's so cool. Yeah, he, he told us that uh, it sounded like we were all fatties, you know. <laughs> like, be ready for this Pentecostal group because they like to eat. They'll shut you down. So. <laughs> we are going to be ready to eat. I'm not going to say any, any names like that for sure. Yeah. But, but yeah, you know that because you went to Bible school there. They have some good, Abs good restaurants. Absolutely. There. Indianapolis has tremendous eateries there, you know, all kinds of restaurants, local downtown. But then for those that are staying kind of on the peripheral or outside, there's there's great restaurants all around. Me, so it's going to be tremendous as far as the food for so who's doing worship this year? The the main worship leader is Aaron Curtis, an incredible, incredible guy. And he has just an all-star cast of musicians and singers that are helping uh, incredible diversity from across North America. And it's going to be extremely, extremely uh, just exciting, I think. Uh, not just to watch, not just to hear. We've been looking at the... The set list, so many people are excited, wanting that set list. What songs are going to be sung that's getting released so soon? Uh, and that's going to be coming out there so they can be playing it on their way to Youth Congress and then hopefully on their way back. Uh, we just might even have one or two that we don't put on there that are just surprises. So, yeah. It's uh, not fair. <laughs> we're excited about Come it. Come on, man. People are so amped up for this, you know, if they get there and might have to hold one or two. <laughs> we'll just see. We'll see what happens. Yes. Okay, so the youth age range is like from 12 to 30 yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. I think you try to find a, a median age in there, you know, somewhere, but the reality is just with we cater specifically to junior high, senior high, and young adults with hyphen. And so we actually anticipate in our hyphen ministry alone, which is that young adult kind of 18 to 30 range, we anticipate our breakout session being around 6,000. Wow. So, awesome. yeah, we're very excited about that. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people in that age range, and they're they're on the border. Why why should we go? Because when you go, you see a lot of younger kids. And so, what what's drawing them? What are you going to do for them activity wise? I think I think this generation of young adults believe in a cause. We're presenting no greater cause, no greater place for a call to ministry and empowering for action. In my opinion, that at an atmosphere like North American Youth Congress, to any young adult that would on the fence, do I go, should I not go, here's what I can guarantee, the power of God is going to be present, people are going to not only receive and understand calling, but they're going to get clarity, uh, sometimes when we talk about calling for a young adult, uh, maybe it's been interpreted a calling to a specific ministry in the sense of a full-time ministry, well I'm talking that same sense in the fact for the young adult that's already a nurse, or is in school to become a contractor, 
they're trying to finish their education in a different area that, that we're saying when you come to North American Youth Congress, you're going to recognize exactly how powerful you are in that particular place. That has been a God call directing you into this area. But as a young adult, you come and get empowered to serve with excellence in the area where you're serving the local right now. For some, no doubt, there will be uh, a call, not just for younger students, junior high or senior high, but so many of our missionaries have said, it was into my 20s before I ever felt such a tug. I was at, a, at an event. So many have attributed back to either an AYC trip uh, of that nature or an event like North American Youth Congress where it was there when I heard the clear call from God. And so to any apostolic that has a desire to know him more, to draw closer to him regardless of age, but specifically to that question, to a young adult, I would never want to miss it as a young adult. And how, how are you guys planning on impacting Indy? I know you guys do a lot of local yeah, projects. Absolutely. So um, what's something new that we're doing this year? I kind of saw some of yeah, explain it. Yeah, so. definitely. On Friday, we're partnering with a company called Pack Shack. Uh, this is where we're putting together meals for the homeless. When we go into a city like this, uh, it's, it's extremely important to us to let the city know we're not just coming to invade, have good service here, but we want to do something to give back. Our way of giving back, partnering with this company, is to be able to bless the homeless of that area, but also have a very intentional impact on the city. Um, you know, our, our scriptural basis for this, Matthew 22, 39, this is our, our project, 22, 39, more of what we're just calling that serve area, where there's going to be hundreds of students that are coming together to pack as many meals as possible on that Friday afternoon have been able to reserve for this. In fact, we had so many reservations, uh, we've already shut down the, the registration opportunity for that event. Uh, and, and we need people to just continue to fund towards this event because it is very expensive to do. It costs, and so they can go on the website, North American Youth Congress, they can go into the special events and they can, they can help donate some funds towards Project 2239. And really, we, we want the city of Indy to see this is a group of students that are genuinely interested in giving back and serving communities and blessing, and really what we would say being the hands and the feet of Christ in this area. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you We're think, excited about it. Yeah, I'm, here. I, I'm excited. I think everybody's excited about it. So uh, do you think we'll ever go backwards, though? Do you think we'll ever get back to a basketball arena? Or is Not you... going back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I, I don't think that we can. I don't think that there's uh, any way that we retract you know, the sky is the limit, in my opinion. We've, we've been talking towards this, prophesying towards this for years. In fact, we've got some incredible old clips that just talk about the fact that one day we'll be at football stadiums uh, and everything about us. And I, not only as the people of God, but we believe it's the United Pentecostal Church. We're about forward trajectory and moving forward. And so, no, I, I, I can't see going back to a basketball yeah. arena. I don't ever want to deal with what we dealt with a couple years ago when the registration sold out like that. We had no seats left. Being a youth pastor for so many years myself, the thought of a youth pastor and a youth group not being able to come because there's not seats, it's worth whatever investment it takes for us to be in arenas large enough. And this, now moving forward, stadium is large enough to facilitate that. Yeah. Uh, and one thing, and I'll, we'll, we'll end it here, but uh, AYCs. Yeah. They're, they're bigger than ever. I, I hear the registration is just crazy. That's exciting. So, uh, what, what, how is that happening? Like, how, why are we young people going on this? Absolutely. Okay, so AYC, Apostolic Youth Group. These are our missions endeavors for students to go. Uh, when you compare this year's with our last youth numbers year, we're still up several, you know, it's a great ratio up, up over 100, maybe 150 from two years ago. On off youth numbers years, because obviously the finance investment for students going on either AYC or we hope that they go to both, but um, on an off youth congress year next year, we're believing for our largest ever crowd by 200 plus. I think the reason that they're going is that our students are feeling a mission of drive like never before. They want to do something. They want to be involved in the kingdom of God. I believe that they're susceptible they're susceptible to the call. And, and so with that call coming, I also want to attribute to an incredible staff upstairs here in this building 
that's working in the GYD offices. Uh, our director, Brock Chavis, and now our new director, Sneed McLean, working extremely hard with global missions, North American missions, finding destinations around the world where when these students go, there's a few things that they're getting. Number one, it's unbelievable how, how much of a family you can turn into in seven to 10 days. So that's hard to duplicate anywhere. Number two, when they go on these, they're getting practical application. Some of the students that are getting up and speaking or singing in these, they tell us, I've never, I've never had the courage at my home church, but here in this particular situation, there's no choice. You're there, you're on that missions trip, and so then we get the reports from pastors when they get home. It's like they broke out of their shell. They wouldn't be satisfied. And so you're getting so those pastors should want to send Absolutely. In <laughs> fact, all I get is positive feedback from pastors. We're sending more next year because of what, it, you know, the long-term payoff. And the third thing, I think, is the spiritual growth. It stretches these students. We have intense times of fasting and prayer leading up to the trip and then prayer sessions during the trip. We think that students leave uh, more well-rounded spiritually, more spiritually mature. And that's why I think the program's growing. Because we all know the best marketing is worth not marketing. And these students are then turning around and saying, they've kind of become part of the AYC culture. They spread that AYC gospel to yeah. friends and, and the program just continues to grow. So. Yeah, it's definitely a culture because I, I know when my friends come back there, it's just they have their own little Facebook groups and their Absolutely. families. And so, Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's like a culture you have to be part of, like Starbucks or something. You know, yeah. you have to be in that group. And uh, Do they get together at Youth Congress? They do. They do. It's, it's amazing because you'll see all the little Facebook posts. You, you know, you have to have gone on that trip to be in their closed Facebook group. It's a little perk there, you know. And, and they'll be meeting up at all different times and locations over Youth Congress, taking these shots, putting it on. So... Yeah, it's an incredible family. I'm telling you, the, we've done several AYC trips, and every group's special in its own specific way, and then we always try to meet up at these different local settings. In fact, I was preaching a, a, a camp just a week ago, and there an AYC student from a previous trip was there, ran up at the end right after, and so wanted to snap a picture. We put it right on the Facebook page. And yeah, it, it's really something special. I would encourage every student, and regardless, let me say that to the young to the young adult stage. This isn't like you need to just be 16 or 17, 18, a high school junior. If you're a young adult in your 30s and you feel a burden um, to go on a missions trip, this is an incredible introductory missions opportunity through NYC. So.